Hey everybody, it's your boy Gobo. Along with me as always is Dames, and it does in fact smell like a very pea-covered Seahawks win this morning. It is the week eight um news and prediction show here on NFL on the glorious and pristine Lock 22 network. Dames? Yes, sir. Had some football this last weekend. We just talked about it. We got some football coming up this next weekend. I mean, how are you feeling about this season so far? Well, dude, I'm just along for the ride. We won three in a row. We lost three in a row. And then we played the best game that we've played in a couple years. And where we played and dominated in all three phases of the game. Without, I, I didn't have a hesitation in my head. It was a good week. It was a good week. You know, and uh, if you watch the recap show, you'll see that I also had a very good week this last week with my Packers winning a big game. So so everybody's happy except for the guys who aren't on the show anymore. They had kind of a rough watch. Um, but before we talk about the pros, bust out your $1,000 textbooks. Uh, we're going back to college for a few minutes. Um, University of Texas, number one, Falls to Georgia and not even really a close game. Georgia went out there and handled business. Brock Ewers looked kind of shitty, which is surprising because I thought he was definitively going to be playing it with the Panthers or the or the Giants next year as the first over one pick. Dude, think about this, Gobo. Before this game, if you're if you're betting money, actual money, there's no way you're betting Georgia unless you're just like I'm. I have money to blow. And right. I'm an opportunist. Unless you're like a huge Georgia fan. I mean, I could see that. Um, or if you're like Marty McFly and have a sports almanac from the future. But um yeah, you no, I don't see... wins it 19 to 17. It's Sorry. like, who would have guessed that? Oh my god, Vegas is reeling. Um, yeah, no, um Texas loses, and um, because of this. This college football playoff is blown wide open. At this point, I don't think there is a definitive best team in the in the NCAA anymore. You could make a point for a lot of these guys. You could say, "Oh, it's Oregon. Oh, it's uh, Ohio State. Oh, it's it's still Texas. Oh, it's Georgia." You know, you could say all of these teams. Every one of them has taken losses. You know, and at this point, what the only the only undefeateds left are Indiana. Oregon and or and Oregon. Oh, whoops, left my uh alarm on there. Uh, Indiana and Oregon are the uh are the last remaining uh unbeatens, and we were talking about this a little bit online. Indiana with a devastating win over Nebraska uh this last week, which I, I'm here for it. Um, I actually you know, it's funny because I talk about I, I went to Indianapolis like a couple of times uh, for business and I really love the people there. Everyone is so nice. Uh, it's definitely a Midwest blue collar type of place. But you go to a bar and like people are like, oh, you're from out of town. Let me get you a drink. Like it's that's the type of like salt of the people that are in Indiana. So I'm like, I really like when there's teams succeed at things. Um, but I've had similar situations in Nebraska, but I also like have to hate Nebraska as a Colorado fan just because of the, the rivalry over the years. Um, but either way, um, Indiana is having a good, having a great season. Um, this playoff is going to be wacky to the core. It's going to um, be so much fun, man, because like games that aren't on the schedule, like Oregon, Ohio state, that's going to happen, man. It's going to happen. And I thought Oregon and Ohio State maybe, already maybe it is, but the yeah. point is Oregon versus Alabama could happen. Right, right. right. Uh, or or maybe we get Indiana, Texas, like and you're you're thinking it's Boise State, Oklahoma, it's Adrian Peterson, it's the Statue of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty play. It's the like, and that's what's so great about the college football playoff is these teams 
like the Indianas of the world that you wouldn't give like if this was a regular college football, there's no way they'd be in the natty. Dude, no if way. this is the regular regular college football season, Bama's out. They have no chance. Yeah, they got two losses. No chance. Yeah. Um, oh my god, yeah. And Tennessee, I watched that game. Um, Tennessee, man, that field was just buzzing. Like they those fans were just like letting Jalen Milrow have it. Um this this rivalry, they said that this is like the hundred and sixty eighth time these teams have played each other or something ridiculous like that. It's the rivalry started in like nineteen twelve, like the same year the Titanic went down. And um Alabama has won the last like fifteen out of sixteen times. That makes Crazy sense. Crazy shit. And the cream sickles get it done. So, you know, here we are, like Savingless Alabama. What is this team? Um, then CU won by uh, thirty something points in uh, in Arizona. Just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> Bowl eligible. Bowl eligible. I think uh, they they either are now or they need one more win. But they're a hundred. I don't. It, even if Colorado loses out, they'll find a bowl for them. Especially since this is potentially prime times last year in the in uh, in the black and gold, and then the Buffaloes can go back into obscurity next year. You know what he says though. He says he's not tired. He says he's gonna, I'm going to be around a long time. Is what he said this week. I I think he's asked. I think that his aspirations though are not to stay at Colorado. I think that yeah, like I said, I think he goes to Florida State next year. I think that he tries to work his way into the NFL, but we'll see how he does on the on the big stage uh, with a team like Florida State. Well, even with Colorado too. Colorado's gotten so much national attention since he's joined. Let me ask you this, and I, I don't know, but let's say Shador ended up in Dallas or the 49 or San Francisco. Do you think those organizations have a place for prime on their coaching staff? Uh, I, Dallas more Dallas. So, I don't see John Lynch going that way, but I could see Jerry Jones being like, absolutely. Jerry Jones just be like, I mean, Jerry Jones was the owner of the Cowboys when fucking prime played there. So yeah, absolutely. He could. Um, I see that. I could totally see that happening, but it's like, would I mean, it's a hard decision to make because it's like if I'm Deion Sanders, do you want the responsibility and the prestige of being a Division One head football coach, or do you want to be just kind of like an assistant DB's coach? You know, like kind of like a ceremonial position just so you can keep watching your son play. So I don't know his thought process, so I can't answer that. I know what I would want, and that would be to to coach a, a real team. And give him give and actually try to win a championship on your own rather than like ride on your son's coattails because your career is over. Yeah, it's a question to ask. So we'll see what uh, we'll see what old uh, what old Primey does next year. It's going to be scootering around uh, at another uh, college facility or at another uh, pro facility, sure. or maybe he stays in Colorado. I'd love him to stay at Colorado because then it, it gets the you know kids from the transfer portal to come and play here. Um. So we had a, a couple of um, couple of trades, a couple of people moving around. I know we talked about the big one was Devonte last week. Uh, this week, um, DeAndre Hopkins finally had enough uh, with the Tennessee experiment. Wants to try to grab a Super Bowl before he retires. Watching D Hop this year, you can tell he's this is it. Like this is not. I don't see, and he goes to the Chiefs. Um, I don't really see him making the Chiefs better, but the Chiefs are kind of hurting at wide receiver after losing Rashi. So, I don't know. What are your What are your thoughts here? Do you think this is a good move, bad move, neutral move? I mean, historically, look what happens when Patrick Mahomes has a top tier receiver. It's scary, and I already told you that I feel like Patrick Mahomes is not a top 10 quarterback in the league right now. Is this the the spark that, and he lost Juju Smith-Schuster uh, in this most recent game. And I think one of their other receivers went down too. So, yeah, thank you. They really needed to do something of this nature. 
And for a fourth round conditional pick, you're telling me there's uh, every team should be like, ah, oh, why didn't I do that? Because I'm thinking, you know, DK Metcalf went down. I don't know if he's hurt for how long, but can you imagine him, Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf and Jackson Smith and Jig Bond? Just think about it. I'd be like, that's insanity, man. Like, why? I was like, yeah, you guys a get a quarterback. Pick. You could really do something. For a fourth round pick? For a, for a fourth round pick, you know, when I think about it too, it's like, uh, you think about like San Francisco too. Um, you know, uh, Ayuk is out for the season, and we'll talk about their enduring injuries. Um, Debo is hurt. Um, George Kittle has had issues with uh, with the injuries this year. McCaffrey's, you know, not playing yet. So it's like, I thought San Francisco was, was probably a better landing spot for D-Hop. But, um, yeah, can, um, Kansas City makes it work. I don't know. I think there's a lot of teams he could have went to. I think that um, – Maybe Hopkins knows something we don't. Maybe he had a meeting with his agent, and his agent like heard, or, like heard some guys from the league office talking in the bathroom, and they're like, "All right, so we're gonna send this ref to the Chiefs game, make sure they win." You know, and so he's like, "Hey, if you want a Super Bowl, this is what we're doing." Well, either he heard it, or he just watches TV, or he watches football games. He watches right, it. yeah, or if you have seen an NFL game in the last four or five years, um. I'm sorry, guys. I don't mean to do that, but when it I'm, comes out like that, it's that's how bad it is. No, for real. Like, I am not a conspiracy theorist at all, especially around sports. But like, God damn it, Roger Goodell, you're not even making it hard to notice anymore how much you suck this team's dick. And like, I I get it. Uh, Andy Reid is a great coach, Hall of Fame coach. Patrick Mahomes might be the best quarterback to ever play in the league. Like I always say, time will tell. He has to he has to get past Brady. He has to get more Super Bowl rings on his hand. But god damn it, like every single meaningful call goes against the team that the Chiefs are playing. Every single one of them. It's fucked up. So anyways, um but DeAndre Hopkins, uh, I wish him the best. Uh, uh he's had a really good career. Uh, we will see what happens. Um, the Saints, um, they give Alvin Kamara a um, a, a two-year extension, which I totally agree with. Um, watching Alvin this year, he is the only reason the Saints have won any games. Um, the dude is definitely in peak condition despite his age. And... Um, you watch this dude play, he is he is a damn hard guy to tackle. Dude's got 86 touchdowns from scrimmage since he started. And that's second most of anybody active um in that time span. So yeah, give him give him 12 million a year. I was gonna say definitely in the conversation for the best running back in the league. Um you know, if he stays healthy, I think, you know, he's definitely an all-star this year. He's definitively the best player on the Saints. His hands, though. He's got Dude, great every... hands. He's got great field vision. Mm-hmm. Guys, guys, is a stud. I mean. And he's a unit. You know, we talked, uh, we were talking in the last show about guys like uh, Mike Tolbert or Mike Allstott. Um, all Mike's uh, somehow. Uh, Al- and Alvin uh, Kamara, he has that beefiness, but he also has the speed and the shiftiness and the ability to catch on on wheel routes. And yeah, he's a great player. Oh, dude! Um, you, when I saw those dreads sticking out of his helmet early on, and I was like, "That dude looks like Marshawn." And not a lot of dudes play with that kind of vigor. So you know, it's like it. And that's it's funny. It's you see it if you see a beefy running back with some dreads coming out of his helmet, like you better hold on because he's coming. Ricky yeah, Williams, unless it's example. Eddie Lacy. <laughs> and Eddie Lacy, if you see him coming, get out of the way for other reasons. Yeah, uh, poor Eddie Lacy. Um, you know, Packers uh, offensive rookie of the year, um, multiple time All Star, was arrested for driving under the influence this weekend. He's also a Seahawk he, for two years. Don't he was. Me. He he. Um, and uh, I, I have an Eddie Lacy jersey in the in the other room. Um, he was one of my favorites. Uh, so unfortunate, but yeah, he also was one of the players he showed up with like after putting on thirty five pounds of weight in the off season because he wasn't working out and just 
eating chips and shit. And so they uh, kind of like, yeah, he had a, he had a troublesome career. Um, but when he was in peak, you wouldn't want to get in his way though. He was a unit. Um, oh my God. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, we're going to skip this for now. Um, and, uh, we'll go to the next thing on the list. Okay. Tua. Hawk Tua and spit on that thing. Um, Tua Tagliavoa, uh, has a press conference after the Dolphins loss. He was on the sidelines in street clothes. He is ready to come back and play for the Dolphins who desperately need him. Um, there's only one thing I really wanted to say about this, but like, I want to hear your perspective. Do you think Tua comes back? Is he going to be any good? Um, he, I just want to give a couple of quotes from him in his press conference. He said, nobody, no one's sort of advice had affected anything that I thought in terms of returning. So no one had an effect on it. Had some conversations with my wife, but that was it. He says, football, I love football to the death of me which to me indicates that he's willing to die on the field. Um, So when I hear that, Gilbo, it makes me sad for two reasons. Um, A, I don't want to see anyone die on the field again, DeMar Hamlin. And because that, I mean, the worst part about it is it disrupts the game for 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Secondly, um, Man, you just said it in your first quote. You you have a wife, bro. You have a family. And that person probably doesn't care about football as much as you do. I get it. You're a warrior and you want to play. I get it that it's going to grind on you to be feel physically able to play, but not be able to because you're sitting there watching. But somebody at some point, and, I mean, if he gets another concussion, it's going to be now. Somebody's going to say, you're done. You can't do this anymore. He, and has, to make, he frankly, has to make a realistic long-term decision if he gets hurt. Well, it's not even going to be his decision. They're just going to say, we don't want you to die on the right. field. And you're not Brett Favre. You're not Troy Aikman. You're not winning three. You haven't won three Super Bowls. You're not going to win three Super Bowls. So it's not worth us. I mean, someone could have said at Troy Aikman, yeah, it's worth the risk to us to put you out on the field. You're a three-time Super Bowl championship. You got a great arm. You got great smarts. Tua ain't that guy. He doesn't have enough. And I'm not saying he's not a talented fellow because that team certainly sucks without him. But it's not like they're winning championships with him. And that's my point. No one's going to put his life on the line for their organization to thrive. And so at some point... It's not up to him anymore. You know, here's here here's here's something I wanted to bring up from that same press conference. And it's just like Tua is so fucking sold on this idea of him being this tough guy. And it's it's this is how he got injured. It's because he didn't want to slide. He lowered his head and he drove his fucking head neck first into a defender. And that's how he got how he got so drastically injured and it's been out for so long. He was asked, one of the reporters asked him, when you come back, are you going to wear a guardian cap? And he says, no. And they're like, well, why? And he doesn't say like, oh, you know, if he had a reason for not wanting to protect his brain, if he's like, oh, yeah, it obscures my vision and I can't hit uh, X pass or whatever, like, or it keeps my neck from moving around. or, Or if he had a reason for not wearing it, but he said, and I quote, it's a personal decision. And then he wouldn't say anything else about it. I'm like, dude, we fucking get it. You're tough. This isn't about being tough. All the guys in this league are tough. These are the best athletes on the planet. These are the strongest professional sporting men like ever. And you're fucking, you're going to be tough against a guy like TJ Watt. You're going to be tough against um, fucking uh, Sauce Gardner. Those guys will kill you. They will end your life. You know, Gobo, I'm I'm with you 10 million percent on this. But have you seen how stupid those things look like? They look they're fucking stupid as hell. I hate them. But I also hate 
I also hate seeing my heroes kill themselves because they have CTE. Yeah. That's it, you know? I I loved players like Junior Seau and Rashawn Salam and and so many, so many guys you could bring into this conversation Derek that Thomas. ruined their brains because they wanted to be tough guys. Derek Thomas. Yeah. The list goes on. Our heroes. And they they they're dead on the ground because of this shit. And it's like I'd rather him wear a stupid hat than than be in a coffin with a, you know. I was gonna say your your Super Bowl rings uh, don't look that great on a skeleton hand, bro. So, um, but like you said, Tua also is not that good too. So it's like, if I'm the Dolphins management, I'm like, at this point, is it even really worth risking this guy's life since we have no chance of winning even with him? Well, that's that's what I'm saying. They're so far out now. Like, just give yourself the rest of the year to heal. Like, maybe you'll be able to actually extend your career. Right. If you let your brain fully heal. But it's like, I don't, dude, I, it's just a But bad. he wants to rush. He wants to be, you know, fucking Galahad and ride back in there and save the Dolphin season. It's just like, dude, you guys are in last place. You have no defense. Like, uh, Tyreek is, like, super disgruntled. Like, you're not making the playoffs. Like, what the fuck is the point? Get up. Like, you're... All you do by losing is generating draft capital. You know what the worst part about this whole thing is? Think about week one, how exciting that was after he got pulled over and they went on a last second field goal. Everything is all aces in that organization is all going the right way. And since then, it's just completely collapsed on them. They they completely fell apart. It's um, terrible. Terrible. You know, terrible. It, I feel bad. I feel bad. I'm not a fan of Florida, but uh, Miami fans, you deserve better. Um, so speaking of, um, you know, we talk about we talk about um, we're going to talk about a, a pretty cringy video here coming up soon. But um, I think like one of the most cringy moments in pro football in the last couple of years has been the Russell Wilson Broncos country let's ride video, and um, Man, when you when you look at the Steelers and you look at uh how well Justin Fields has played and how that they are, you know, they're in the they're in the talks of winning that division. They're definitely on the road to the playoffs. Uh Justin Fields is like finding and and we talked about this week week in and week out that Russell Wilson, as soon as he was healthy, was gonna come back because of Mike Tomlin's um philosophy about you don't lose your spot by getting injured. And Russ comes in and plays a goddamn good football game. And and the Steelers dominate last week. I fuck man, like to 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 be a fly on the wall um when Mike Tomlin is figuring this shit out. Cause god damn it, that man knows his football. Dude, this this might take a while. Um I have a rather large chip on my shoulder that resides right here. And it's called Super Bowl 40. I effing hated the Steelers through the Ben Roethlisberger area. And it's funny because he'll come up again in this show. Um, I hated that whole era. I felt like even the refs apologized for that game and the bad calls that they made Bill Levy may rot in hell when you finally get there. Um, I felt like they wanted to give the bus a title on his way out. And, you know, they're one of those classic football teams, and we're a team that nobody we're, – we're South Alaska, basically. Um, on paper, we won that game. Watching that game and the terrible calls that were made against the touchdowns that were called – anyway, it's a long history that resulted in me – hating the Steelers right now. They are my second favorite team in the sport. And this has a lot to do with Mike Tomlin. I've watched him take crap from the media as, as recently as two, three weeks ago about how he's really weak on wide receivers. They always end up being divas and leaving. And that's not necessarily untrue, but it's not necessarily his fault either. I think there's a reason that he, is the longest tenured coach in the league. If I was starting a team right now from scratch, Mike Tomlin is my head coach. And that's where I want to start. 
and I'm I'm gonna build from here. Okay. He uh has never been one to he's the Barry Sanders of coaches, dude. He goes and wins, he just hands the ball to the ref. He never does the spike. Yeah. He never he, has he, that moment. Yeah, he's not doing the the rowboat um coordinated touchdown dance. Exactly. And he maintains his I mean, he's like do you remember Rocky IV where, where uh, the Russian dude like is all business all the time? That's Mike Tomlin. Like, mm -hmm. can't rattle this guy. Whatever I... you can't tell if they're winning or losing by looking at him on the sidelines. All right, so here's where here's where his brilliance comes in. Okay, he goes out at the beginning of the season, takes advantage of Denver, just takes advantage. Who who wasn't taking advantage of Denver the last two years? Mike, say, yeah. yeah, give me that guy. That guy's a Hall of Fame quarterback. I'll take him right now. He's going to be our starter. And then two weeks later, he makes a deal with the – he fleeces the Bears, absolutely fleeces the Bears out of giving up a guy that could be a franchise quarterback. Yeah. So now he's got two cards in his hand. And he's already promised the starting job to Russell Wilson. He does say there's going to be a you know, battle in camp for whatever – and Russell Wilson ultimately ends up winning that. Well, due to circumstances outside of the control of these gentlemen, Russell Wilson gets a calf injury, has to sit down. This is perfect for Mike Tomlin because he's like, guess what? I already did the work. I got right. another guy that I can plug in. That's brilliant, first of all. Justin Fields goes out there and what are the, he loses two games and wins three, right? So they're four and three or four and two right now. Four and two. I think they're five and two now. Okay, five and two. So he wins. Uh, you oh, know. No, four and two. They had a buy you right. Okay, so what do we what do we know thus far? All right, we know that Russell Wilson is now back from injury. He's maintained his professional decorum by saying you don't lose your job to injury. But this is where the true brilliance of Mike Tomlin comes in. <clears throat> he has to be looking at the schedule, saying, okay. We got a reeling Jets team coming here. I get a chance to start my starting quarterback. I get the Giants next week. Then I have a bye. And then look at their schedule. It's all of their uh, division games. He's going to know exactly what he has in both of these quarterbacks by the time the difficult part of the schedule comes around. And I just – I look at this game in particular – the crowd was booing Russell Wilson um, as they announced him as the starting quarterback for this game, and they were chanting Justin Fields. How does that? How do you think that makes the guy feel? Russell Wilson has been this guy that's got duck feathers. Yeah, I mean, he, he should have played for Oregon. It just rolls right off of him, and no matter what, dude. And like, I don't understand because this guy's taken more crap than it, and reason rightfully so on a lot of it. I mean, he brings a lot of this shit on himself, and. He went out there and he dominated Aaron Rodgers. And th this is a class. This is one of my favorite matchups, dude. I was like, yes, this is like the old days, just two different teams, you know? Right. It's Rodgers, Wilson. And guess what? Rodgers didn't even look like he belonged on, on the field. Yeah. Rodgers, Rodgers is, yeah, he is. He's 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 Donald Trump out there. Like he's he's passed it. The Jets haven't scored thirty seven points in a single game. Russell Wilson comes out in week seven after not playing for over a year and puts up thirty seven. No, like, and I can say because I have been one of those Russell Wilson doubters. I certainly wasn't after the first couple of times, but like I remember, you know, um, you'll you'll remember this as a Seahawks fan as well. When Russell Wilson was a rookie, the the year before, Seattle traded for a Packers backup that was supposed to be their franchise guy, a guy named Matt Flynn. And I remember Matt Flynn was great. When he came in to, to spell Rodgers and Favre, like he would always play really consistently, never really turn the ball over, had a cannon, had good field vision. And I was like, Flynn is going to be the guy in Seattle. And I was like really excited to see him play. And then right before the season starts, I heard, oh, Flynn lost the quarterback battle in camp to this rookie from Wisconsin. And oh, yeah, by the way, he's 5'10". I'm like, what the fuck is Seattle doing? 
I thought that was the worst decision that could have ever been made in football. And then Russell Wilson, he didn't care. He doesn't give a shit what people think about him. He goes out there, he plays his game. And I think that was, he struggled in Denver. And I honestly, like, I don't think it was because of him. And, and especially you look at that second season in Denver, Russell Wilson was playing good statistical football. It was just the rest of the team that wasn't getting a ton. And of course, it's hard to get along with Sean Payton. I think that's fair to say for most people. Um, he's an, he's a very intense person, but you go, like you said, you go to Mike Tomlin, he doesn't care about your personality. He doesn't care about off field. He doesn't care about any of that stuff. He cares. Can you play if I put you on the field and he finds guys who can do it and God well, damn, what like, do we know historically and, and, about Russell Wilson when he has a good defense? Um, he can do some magical things. Now he won Super Bowls. Yeah. We also know that the uh, the offensive line for Pittsburgh is ranked around twenty third in the league. And what offensive line has Russell Wilson ever made look better? None. I mean, the guy. You know, the, he is he is short. He gets a lot of passes batted down. It's hard for him to see over the guys in the pocket. His best. Years have been when he's outside the puck. He was hanging and throwing dimes on these. I mean, seriously, some of those throws were like, I was like, dude, I miss you uh, a little bit. I mean, like I said, Russell Wilson's a Hall of Fame quarterback. Maybe the shortest Hall of Fame quarterback that, that's in there. Um, so funny that you said something a second ago. You said Super Bowl. And I thought about that last as, as I was putting the notes in for the show. And what we're going to talk about at the top of the show here. And I was like, ooh, they got to play Baltimore twice still. These are going to be fun games, dude. These I was going to say, going into, the, going into the season, I'd, I'd have picked Baltimore in both of those games. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, and I'm not going to make picks now because I'm going to let the injuries and stuff kind of settle before I make my uh, selections. But, like, yeah, dude, uh, Mike Tomlin, there is a reason he has never had a losing season. One last thing. While I hated watching the Russell Wilson press conference, I watched the Mike Tomlin press conference, and he he spiked the football, dude. He spiked the football. He ended the press conference when they asked him about uh, the decision to start the quarterback. He goes, well. This is why I'm highly compensated. Bye. And he got up. Right. And it was awesome. Man. I was like, yeah. And then he, he like he puts on his like light up sunglasses and then like yeah. Oh. Or or just like the sunglasses like descend from the uh, descend from the ceiling. Yeah. It's gonna be a fun story to follow the rest of the year. And and I mean, I'm I, loving the Steelers I, right now. I'm I do, I do enjoy the Steelers. I think, um, and I like Pittsburgh too. I think that you know it's a, it's a blue collar town. I mean, they're a uh, they're the really passionate fan base. They've had a lot of success throughout the years. I mean, it's the most it's the winningest franchise in the NFL. Um, actually, I think the Patriots I think tied them with their last Super Bowl. But um, yeah, like a lot of great history, a lot of just the best players. Hall of Fame is 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 just. It's just patched with black and gold. And so, like, I, I like seeing this team succeed. Um, and I really do like Mike Tomlin as a coach. Dude, dude is just a he's a true student of the game. So, um, so good, good job, Steelers. Um, Russell Wilson, I he's a lot less cringy uh with this team than he was with the Broncos. So speaking of cringe. Let's get to the uh, let's get to the injury report. Look at there he is. There's a confetti Russell. Uh, let's get to the injury report. Yikes! Um, we're gonna talk about our our favorite player who got injured. Let's let's save that for the end because uh, these other guys are a little less um, a little less impactful. Uh, Vegas loses Aiden O'Connell to a broken thumb. Um, kind of a it's one of those injuries like these guys their their arms move so fast and everybody's wearing a metal helmet um it happens ah that looks painful oh See, dude i bet least, it hurts so fucking bad yeah like at least 4 weeks so gardner Minshew. no know, know that when you're making your picks yeah 
It's uh, we're back Isn't to the anybody staff. Anybody more inconsistent than Kirk Cousins? It's Gardner Minshew. I think. Well, Gardner Minshew to me is just like he's just not a starting quarterback. Like I think that he's he, he's an NFL quarterback, but he reminds me of somebody like um like Ryan Fitzpatrick, where he's just like a backup on like thirty different. Teams. Even you say that, and I'm like, sometimes he was. Sometimes, you know, sometimes Minshew, sometimes Minshew shows shows starter caliber. Starter yeah, I caliber mean, it's, play. it's the inconsistency that bothers yeah. me the most. But it's just that, like, you need a guy who can do it every week. That you know that when there's two minutes left in the game and you're down by two points and you don't have one timeout left, he's going to get you that sixty yards you need to win the game. Dude, and think about these guys; they exist still. Like Andy Dalton is a great right. backup quarterback. You've got Joe Flacco. These are guys like, I mean, I would have put Fitzpat- Fitzpatrick in that with those guys. I mean, there's there's Morgan, um Sam Darnold, yeah, did that he's dudes in first place as a backup. Well, now they're in second place with uh with that loss to the to the Lions. Um, but anyways, uh, so Vegas. Um, regardless of who's starting in quarterback there, I just don't see them. They're they're bad. They're a bad team. They've they've basically by trading Devonte, they're done with this season. Um, so Aiden O'Connell. Um, if they ouch. lose a couple more games, could they trade Max Crosby? Oh my God, he's not going to Seattle. Why? Why? Why wouldn't he? I was just saying. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> You're just saying I, that because it would be very scary. I, I say that because I know where you're going with it. Whenever you say a good defensive player, you're like, well, they could trade him. I still think the Forrest Buckner will be a Seahawk at some point. It's like, I know somebody who might want him. Oh, um, uh, all right, move on. Anyways, okay, so um, a team that uh, – holy, holy dooly. Um, Tampa Bay, they are out of wide receivers. Um Mike Evans hamstring week to week. He's an older guy. Um, I I just don't see. I mean, but Tampa aside, you know, unlike Vegas, is going to be competitive in their division. Um, but then also Chris Godwin out for the season. Um, man, I bet they're really wishing they would have made a play on DeAndre Hopkins before all this happened. <laughs> I think they were probably playing the game as this deal was going down. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, well, that's the thing is, like, you don't know that your two top receivers are going to get hurt in the same game. I mean, gosh, dang it! Just that's when Baker, bad. Dude, Baker Mayfield has eighteen touchdown passes. He's having a great season. I think before before this happens, I think he's in the running for MVP. And uh, we'll see how he does. And this is the thing. If Baker can make it work without these two guys, I don't think it's a question anymore. And then not only that, but our favorite team up in Cleveland gets to watch the guy that they cut to sign a different guy who has different circumstances, which are significantly worse. And they get to watch their quarterback they cut win the MVP with Tampa. Man, wouldn't that be something? So we'll see how Tampa does. Um, but that's a, that's a shot. Mike Evans, uh, I talk a lot about, um, you know, like short yardage um, receivers, big, tall guys that you can throw a fade to and you know they're coming down with it. Mike Evans is like the king of that. Um, he has been his whole career. That's why he has 100 touchdown catches. Um. Baltimore, uh, they lose Zay Flowers for an indeterminate amount of time. Um, Zay Flowers is a, is a huge playmaker, uh, super fast. He's had kind of an inconsistent season, though, so I don't know how much this hurts Baltimore. I, I mean, don't I don't know the extent of it. I couldn't find anything um, on the injury report other than in-game. I saw him go out, so I don't. I think he's probably fine then. Um, yeah, if they don't – because teams are pretty good about um, if a player is out-out, they're like – the first thing they want to do is get him on the IR so they can they can restructure that cap space and find find a replacement. Yeah. Um, so if he – the fact that Baltimore hasn't said much, I'm just guessing that he is 
at least highly probable to return in a short amount of time. Uh, the Giants lose uh, um, Jalen Hyatt. Um, I mean, when it rains, it pours. I, I don't think there's any reason to risk bringing him back and risk a further injury uh, unless you're you're trying to see if this is a, a long-term solution at receiver for you. Um, Giants, man, it's, it's goddamn, goddamn, that team is just suffering. Uh, and it's uh, I'm kind of here for it. Um, Washington, this is a big one. Jaden Daniels, um, the all star rookie quarterback, rookie of the year candidate, uh, goes down in this game. Uh, he takes off his pads, comes back out on the field in his street clothes. He's, he's cheering on his, his, his team. Marcus Mariota's out there dropping dimes on the Panthers. I don't know. I, I want to hear your opinion on this, James, but I kind of feel like if there was a more I, – I, I think that, like, I'd be more concerned if they weren't winning this game by 30 points to see Jaden Daniels in, uh, in street clothes, but um, I think he's okay. I think if the kid's a competitor, if it's a rib injury, they're going to wrap him up. They're going to give him one of those uh, big bulky, like – fat guy suits that, that protect the quarterback ribs. Um, I don't see him. I don't see him stand out for very long. It, well, the thing that, that think about under center, every time you're making that motion, it pulls on your ribs. So they're going to either have to hope that he's okay or work out of the shotgun a lot. Um, and I mean, he'll be fine doing that. He's great, but it kind of takes away half your playbook. It's like if one of your tight ends goes down, then your half your playbook is gone, you know. Um, but the coach says he's day to day and or a week to week, I should say. Um, but he fully expects him to play against the Bears, and quite honestly, I want that to happen. I need to see these two rookies go head to head. It's one of the more fun games on the on the. Side. I was gonna say. I was gonna say as Caleb as Caleb develops his skills a little bit more and kind of shakes off that rookie malaise. Um, he has really made some good plays, but then also the Bears' opponents have been pretty weak. But I don't know. So have the so have the Commanders a little bit. So this will be an interesting game. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and yeah, I absolutely want Jaden to play because. Man, uh, we're still in the news section, and I realize we're in injuries, but I got a, a news update for you. Oh, yeah, Seattle has just traded Jerome Baker, linebacker, and a fourth round pick to the Titans for Ernest Jones, the fourth. Yes, okay, uh, dude, we need help at the linebacker position more they than anything. And this dude's they a stud, and, and Tennessee is in pure fire sale mode right now, yeah. man. They're they, that's. I love I love watching teams when they're like, we are fucked this year. Like we are not gonna win. Get rid of everybody. Let's start over. Um, but and, that just goes to show fourth round pick, we could have got another receiver. But no, we got this linebacker. I'm dude, I'm stoked. We need no, that's him. good. Yeah. Like you said, yeah, the the um Seattle's one of the Seattle's biggest weak points is over is um is in that middle distance because their their wide their linebackers cannot cover people. Um so we'll see uh how uh how uh, you know your new fella does because uh one of your um one of your division rivals and uh former NFC champion San Francisco 49ers Lose Brandon Ayuk for the season, and then Debo, 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 Debo Samuels, um, is day to day with an illness as well. So, um, man, San Francisco, they are falling apart on us. George Kittle has had injury issues. Christian is obviously still out. Um, I think that he uh, – I heard that he's returned to practice in a non-contact uh, jersey. So I think that, like, they're starting to get to a place where Christian's going to be ready to play in a few weeks. Um, man, this San Francisco team is just – they do not look like themselves at all. And it's just like you got to blame the injuries because it's the only thing that changed. 
You have to, and the fact that they have a quarterback that was just put into the greatest situation on the planet. I mean, sorry, I think I just continue to believe that anyone can thrive with those weapons. And look, I mean, I've been saying it, man. Look what happens when those weapons disappear. They're a mediocre team at best, which should not be the case. Right. Well, I, mean, I think Brock Brock Purdy is good, but yeah, like you go in and that supporting cast is stellar. It, I mean, it's at least it was. Now it's dude, you put Russell Wilson on that team, they're winning the Super Bowl. With with all the weapons. With, oh, okay, if everybody's healthy. Okay. Not, I'm like, not like they I'm are like now. without Christian. Not like they are now. They're winning the Super Bowl. Challenge, I mean, come on. I mean, it's possible. I don't know. I the Super Bowl is hard because you gotta get over the Chiefs and their uh, you know, narrative winning. Um uh. staying in the NFC West, DK Metcalf. Um week to week with a knee injury. Tell me about this. Low grade MCL sprain. Okay. So that's like I'm, two or three weeks. I'm betting he's gonna miss this week with Oh, but what I mean, do you, what do you do? Well, Jake. like you met, like you mentioned earlier, um, Seattle's got a pretty good receiver core. Um, I think it definitely hurts them. I don't think it absolutely cripples them like it would have in the past. Um, he it really is having a breakout season for him. I mean, DK is having a good season for sure. He's I think he's probably the best player on the Seattle on Seattle's offense. Um. Yeah. I, there's no question. Yeah, and, and um, so yeah, hopefully he comes back. But I think that um, Seattle plays their game. I think that they have other people they can throw it to. I really like Jackson Smith and Jigba. Um, I know the jury is out on him. I think that he drops balls sometimes, but he also has breakout potential, and he also um has made really good catches in traffic. So I think that he has a lot of potential. He just has to get his head in the right place. Do you remember Doug Baldwin? I do. He's kind of like, he's kind of like he is. He like, is kind of Doug Baldwin-y. like a slot, a, a good slot guy. That's third down reliable, just making his career on third down. That's how I feel about it. I kind of, um, you know who who I always think about when I think about Smith and Jigba is uh, Victor Cruz. Yeah. Oh, that's another good one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it's like he's like one of those guys where it's like he makes plays and you're just like, God, this guy is a bonehead, man. Like, what are we doing? And then he'll catch the ball with his fingers and run 45 yards for a touchdown. It's just like, shit. Okay. So uh, you just, you never really know, you know, that it's in him, you know, he's got the skills, he's got the heart, he's got everything that he needs. He just has to figure it out for himself. And so that's where it's like, it gets hard with guys like that because it's like, you never really know because, and then it's like, also, you know, do you trade him based off of his potential? Because, like, he gets to another team. Maybe he does better. Maybe he does worse. You never really know what to do with him. So, um, but DK, yeah, that's definitely a loss because he's he's one of those guys who's super consistent through his career in Seattle. Um, so, hopefully, he's able to come back, keep you guys competitive in that division. Okay. Let's open up this can of hand jobs and talk about the misery the fucking misery that is Cleveland. God damn it. Deshaun Watson tears his Achilles out for the season. He's got a guaranteed contract. So now even if, even if the Browns found had a team that ever wanted him and was able to get rid of that contract, that's out the window because he's hurt. I'm I look, man, there's a lot to unpack here. Let me address that one first. If Cleveland finds a suitor that has cap space, like my ridiculous scenario at the last show, it doesn't matter that he's injured because they're just gonna cut him anyway. They're not they're not getting him on the team as any kind of like backup. They they don't want the distraction. They just want the first and second round pick. And they're willing to pay $80 million to get it at, for a year. Um, because then they're going to have two awesome players that they don't have to pay for another four years, which is really good for. I mean, that's not, that's, that's not nothing. 
right from a really bad team that's going to have really good picks to give you um that said here's this whole time on this show we've bagged on Deshaun Watson for his conduct I'm not taking any of that back all right he's been a miserable piece of shit to a lot of people uh, for a long time. However, as with Michael Vick and others before him, who did deplorable things to people and animals, they found a way back onto the field or into the booth or just into our, you know, our hearts in general. And I've always felt a certain kind of way about that. What I saw on Sunday, and I'm going to let you comment on the video that I sent you earlier when we're done. I'm not going to make any comments on that, but when I saw what I saw on Sunday, here's what I thought. Here's what I saw. I saw a guy who faced up to the stuff that he's done, and all allegations that are coming in now are from the same time period as before. There are no new allegations for conduct since he went through the rehab program that the NFL required him to, missed all the time, paid all the fines, got back into practice, worked his ass off every day, went out there, played not not well, played not well. But I don't question the man's effort. I don't question his work ethic. I don't question any of those things. And for him to have an injury like this, non-contact, that puts him out for the season, maybe taking the last snap ever for this team, he's in tears on the cart. The crowd is screaming, you deserve it. You deserve it over and over. And that's the last image that he has walking off the field. Now, I feel a certain kind of way about that. I certainly would not have been engaging in that chant with these people. And I'm not at all condoning his behavior or the reason for that chant at all. What I am going to say is you, Cleveland is hip, it's, it's a hypocrisy that exists in the sport. I'm not going to say it belongs solely to Cleveland, but let me give you an example, Gobo. And then I'll let you run from here and I'll shut up about it. Ben Roethlisberger was accused of raping a woman while his bodyguard stood outside the door and kept anybody from coming in. All right. That was an allegation that went away with money. The very same thing that happened here with Deshaun Watson went away with money. Um, ben Roethlisberger is white. Deshaun Jackson is black. Or Watson, sorry, is black. I think it matters here. But what matters the most is Ben Roethlisberger is a winning quarterback. If the Cleveland Browns were undefeated right now and this injury happened, no one cares about his sexual conduct. No one. They're sad that they lost their franchise quarterback. And that is why I find what the people of Cleveland did, absolutely disgusting, despicable, unforgivable. I'm through with them as an organization. Go ahead, Gobo. So, I also, like, I don't want to condone anything that Ben Roethlisberger has done, not done, been accused of, what have you. I think that um, the fact of the matter is, is that um, Cleveland is more to blame for this situation than Deshaun Watson himself. Like, and um, I don't, like I said, I, I, I don't condone if he is guilty of these things he's, um, you know, accused of. I also do believe in, um, in the criminal, you know, not like fully believe in our criminal justice system, but I do believe that there is due process for these crimes and we shouldn't condone somebody if they haven't been convicted of them. That being said, I also believe that there are, you know, you can get better, you can make improvements, and you can, uh, you know, learn from your mistakes and misjudgments and things that you've done in the past. I believe all of these things. Here is the problem with Deshaun Watson and why we've been so critical of him on this show is that 
Cleveland gave up a solid quarterback and gave up all of these future prospects to take this contract knowing, knowing that these are things that this man has been accused of. You know, it's not like a situation with Ray Rice where it was on video, where it's like, there's no question that he did it. There's no question about what the situation was. Um, did Deshaun Watson deserve to get booed by his home crowd after he's getting it, after he's getting carted off after his career is potentially over? I, I don't think his career is over. I think he will suit up in the NFL, whether it be as a, as a starter backup, what have you. Um, I think that his days of making the type of money that he's making right now are probably over. Um, but here's, here's what I will say is that um, the Browns deserve to lose as an organization. And it's because of this case. Um, and you look at a guy, you know, and you sent me a video of their backup, Jameis Winston, and it's very um, Terrell owens where he's like, that's my quarterback. That's my teammate. Like, you know, it's like, he's crying. He's like, he's really, he's talking about like how hard Deshaun Watson works, how hard, you know, like these guys want to win, you know, these guys they show up every day, they put in their all. And it's just like, here's my opinion, James Winston. You're never going to see this, but if you ever do, here's why you need to shut the fuck up. Um, because you are not put there to be the leader of this team. You missed your opportunity to do that in Tampa. Like you, your inconsistent play and your erratic behavior off of the field has led to you being a backup behind this guy. Now you have an opportunity to go and play and make money and, and be and be a part of this organization and go do that. But here's the thing. Deshaun Watson is not a victim in this situation. Deshaun Watson is getting paid $80 million to be a figment of what he used to be on a team that does not deserve that type of play because they cannot find suitable pieces around them because they make bad decisions like this. So here we go. Deshaun Watson is probably on a, on a new team next year, but knowing Cleveland, knowing how fucking dog shit chaotic and toxic this front office is, how toxic this fan is, these fan, this fan base is, you deserve to have Deshaun Watson as your quarterback. You deserve it. You don't deserve to win. You don't deserve to have a good time. You deserve to watch the playoffs from the sofa. And that's what I will say is that, you know, it's like Deshaun Watson maybe deserves better. The city of Cleveland and the Browns organization does not. You deserve everything happening to you right now. And Jameis Winston crying is a perfect example of that. And it's right up there on cringe level with like Russell Wilson saying Broncos country let's ride before going, you know, four and 13. Um, I don't know. I just like, I fucking every time, every time Cleveland <laughs> takes an L it's a win for America. Two final things. Go Uh DTR replaced Watson in this game also got injured. So Jameis Winston had to come in after all. And play, and he'll probably be the quarterback starting this week. Just so you know, for your pick, which I already think we know that we're not probably picking Cleveland. I don't think I don't think we're picking Cleveland. Yeah. Um. The second thing, Russell Wilson just going back there ended his press conference by just getting up and leaving. He didn't have a call sign at all. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we're ever going to hear Steelers country. Let's weld, I, dude. Let's weld would have been amazing. But I also, it's it's extra cringy to me as a Denver native. Um, the fucking Broncos country shit is so stupid. Like, you know, it's just like this is Broncos country. I'm like, this is that I don't mind. It's the let's ride thing that just puts it over the top. I mean, I it's like a horse thing. I'm pretty sure somebody from the marketing team told him to say that. Like, I don't fucking care. But, like, the fact that, like, there's a video of him doing, like, hundreds of takes of that same sentence. And it's just, like, he's making, like, the most awkward, like, Broncos country. Let's ride. I I'm like, agree. I'm like, bro, you are that? 5'10". You're not, you're not a fucking cowboy. Like, just go throw the football. 
Yeah, if I was trying to diet, I could probably watch that and then not eat for a couple days. I was gonna say it's so lame, but yeah. But you know, uh, they asked him at the end of the game uh, on the field interview. They're like, "What's going to be your new call sign?" He's like, "You'll just have to wait till the end." I was like, so "I watched. Gonna... I made it a point to watch the press conference." And he just gets up and walks off. He's like, "Thanks, everybody." Yeah. Right. You I was know. like, "Yes." Yeah, he learned. I mean, he's like, he learned. He's coming, coming, coming full circle. It's like what if you asked Jameis Winston what his call sign would be, it would just be like, "Um, suck my dick." Like, yeah, because he's such a fucking idiot. I'm sorry, like Jameis Winston. I just yeah. he's one of those guys. Seven Mary pussy. Yeah, yeah, eat that pussy. Like he got suspended from Florida State for fucking yelling that in the cafeteria. Um. Fucking like the guy is so fucking stupid. He reminds me a lot of like a less talented Brett Favre, where he gets out there, he throws the ball a million miles an hour. He's fucking he's he's kind of a dumb southern dude. He's tough. Um, but like he he makes poor decisions with the ball, he throws a lot of interceptions, and then his off the field his off the field uh antics are just like they're not necessarily like cr- like like they're criminal. But they're not like maliciously criminal. They're just fucking stupid. Right, 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 right. An idiot. You know that's that's why it's like uh, Jameis Winston reminds me a lot of Brett Favre, like, but like way, way, way less talented. Um, Favre, Favre was a special player, um, but also you know a dumb Southern motherfucker. Well, um, thanks for uh, letting me get all that out, Gobo. I appreciate the uh, the time. No, of course. I think that um, these are important conversations to have. Uh, is us dunk- dunking on the Browns, and you know what? I don't feel bad about it anymore. I don't. I don't feel bad for the Browns. They deserve it the way that they handle these situations. Are their fans are dead to me? I mean, I mean, I I think that there are there are good things in Cleveland. You know, there are. You know, they got Drew Carey in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And people, there are good people, and, and and good people deserve to have a winning football program. Um, but fuck, man, like that is not the way to do it. They've got spaghetti with chili on it. Okay, yeah, that's I I notice I didn't mention that on the positive side of of things in Cleveland. I've never had it, so I can't. You know, I I suppose I don't like spaghetti though. I think that's probably I think I think spaghetti is a trash pasta. I think it's. Okay, I think spaghetti, like the traditional dish, is one of the most boring foods that you can make. It is, but mm-hmm. I like chili. I love, I love chili. A good, a good chili, chili is like yeah. there's no beans. I mean, you can get it with beans, but they make traditional chili where it's just a meat sauce. Where it's just, it's just meat and grease, yeah, uh, and pepper, yeah. No, I, I, I love chili. Um, like chili dogs. Like I am, I am a hot dog fanatic. Um, so like. But yeah, I honestly like I'm not a huge pasta person, but I think that there are good pastas. But spaghetti is like that's like some prison shit, man. Like it's like you're four years old and it's like you have to eat spaghetti or you won't eat anything. Like it's slimy, it's fat, it's doughy, it's 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 fucking it's lazy. Spaghetti is a lazy dish to me. And 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 Cleveland is a lazy franchise. <laughs> You know, they're not making bow tie or angel hair pasta. They're making fucking spaghetti there. And that's, yeah. And 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 Deshaun Watson and Jameis Winston is spaghetti and chili together. It doesn't, it's bad and it, may, it doesn't make sense. Anyways, um, so that's it for the news. Um, and let's talk about future news. Uh, we, we're going to get our Marty McFly almanacs out here and we're going to pick some games uh, for the week. Um, we got. All right, Broncos gonna, country, let's roll. I was going to say, yeah, Bron- yeah Bron- Broncos country, let's bow. Um, yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about I'm looking, looking at the slab of games here and this might well, be one late, of our- First of all, no bye week. For anybody, I know that's really strange that they, there's no buys in the middle of the in the middle of the season like this. But um, NFL schedulers, I'm looking at this slate of games. I don't see a lot of exciting picks here. So, it, 
God damn. I'm like I'm looking at like like Buffalo, Seattle, maybe Washington, Chicago, I'm kind of excited for. Everything else I'm looking at it and it's just like blowout, 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 blowout. Um fuck man, like let's let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Let's get this out oh. of the way. Um all right, Thursday night. Minnesota at the Rams. Um, I I usually take the first pick, right? Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it matters in this one. Uh, Minnesota by a lot. They got a redemption game coming up. Uh, they played a great game against Detroit. A couple of mismanaged uh, some mismanaged time at the end. Uh, the Rams, uh, with injuries. Um, you know it's it's in L.A. It's at SoFi. It's it's favorable conditions. I don't see anything wacky happening here. I'm taking Minnesota. Um third thirty five seventeen. Uh just kind of a by by the numbers win. All right. I am going to look. I I would not be surprised if the Rams won this game. I uh, would. I would be I would be very surprised if the Rams won. Uh I'm gonna tell you why. Um, Sean McVay is a good coach. He's a good coach, and I was reviewing their wins and losses um, earlier, and they they've been in all their games, man. They've been in all. They're going to be in this game, so I certainly don't mind your choice of of Victor. The score I do have a problem with. I think we're looking more like a 27-23 situation. And I'm I am gonna go with Minnesota, but I won't be surprised if the Rams win this game. I will not. I mean you're yeah. I I, I don't I don't hate that decision. So you have an opinion. I, I don't hate the opinion. Um, and you're right. The Rams have been in, competitive in most of their games. Um, I just the, – the 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 Vikings are so solid this year, man. I just – I don't see it. And the Rams are just – they're injured to shit. Um, L.A. is like the easiest stadium to play in because um, they're, they're fans. Like it's a huge stadium. It's never full because there's not ma- very many Rams fans. Um Either way, yeah. Okay, so we we both pick Minnesota. I like them in a big win. You like them in a close one. Uh, This next one, uh, early slate, Cleveland, who we just talked about at nauseum, is hosting Baltimore. Uh, I think uh, it's your pick, but um, I I also don't think that um, we're going to have a differing opinion on this one. I got 41-19 Baltimore. Yeah. I think that um, without the quarterback controversy, it's a it's a division game, and Cleveland maybe keeps it closer. I think though, right now we're looking at Jameis Winston maybe going out there against the Baltimore team, who just got a big win against Tampa in prime time. Yeah, uh, Ravens are gonna fuck them up. Um, I will say forty two twenty. Ah, Ravens. Duck of shit. You just prices right at me. I I love prices writing you. It's like the funniest shit. Um, you can prices write me on this one because I know we're picking the same team on this next game. Whatever, dude. Um, fucking Detroit. Um, ironclad got a huge win in Minnesota last week, hosting the Titans, who are fire selling all their players. I fucking. They're in Detroit. I, I, dude, like this is gonna be bad. Like, like, how excited can you actually be to be getting a Tennessee Titan on your team? I was gonna say, like, this is like one of those games where, like, the tickets are gonna be like eight dollars because nobody fucking wants to go. Everyone knows who's gonna win. Uh, it's fucking. If 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 the Titans win this game, I will be so happy because it means the Packers have an opportunity to take the division lead. Um. But fuck, man, like, yeah, they're not going to lose. Uh, Detroit, I am going to say 35 to 3 uh, wins this game. 35 to 3, Detroit? Yeah, you, so you can go 36 to 4 if you want. Hold on. 
so stupid. We're very petty on this show. You know Dude, two, two safeties. We are very petty on this show. We yeah. are. We are. Uh, why? Oh, I was like, why can't I fucking... All right. I got to pull up week eight here. Make sure we're doing this right. Schedule week eight. Okay. You know what? Look at the top of this. Away and home are mixed up. That's what I was checking. Oh, okay. I was going to say, yeah, because they're in Green Bay in the Jacksonville game. Yeah. So, not that it matters with what we've done so far. Our picks are not going to change. I was going to say, I um, mean, I think that the Minnesota game is probably not going to be as close. But, yeah. Worse than that. yeah, all right. So, all right. I, I'm i going to pick Detroit, obviously. And I'm going to say um, 28 17 is where I'm at. Sure. All, right. All right. So, okay, so the teams on the left are at home. So Indianapolis is hosting Houston. Correct. All right. This one's your pick. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. It's Indianapolis at Houston. Wait. Okay, so then, okay, so so this list is fucked then. All right, let me, because uh, I get Houston on the right. I mean, I just just switch home and away, and you're good. Okay. On the left are the um, away away team, and the teams on the right are home teams. Okay, so it's in Houston. Yes. Okay. All right, Indianapolis. Can you just read it? Read it blank at blank. That's what I've been doing. You'll be good. Yeah. So did we just have it backwards for? Um... Because you because they're they're in L, they're in L A Cleveland and Detroit right, L A Cleveland and, yeah I guess we're okay so th- yeah you were right man yeah you you're twisting me up here man you were right the whole you've been right, right. the whole time all Sorry. right so Houston Houston host uh, Indianapolis this is your pick like I said um there's there's like this early slate for sure there's just not a lot of good games I like this game it's a division game two of the better quarterbacks from last seat the two. Standouts to me from last season. Bryce Young is off the face of the earth, and Will Levis yeah, is. Right. And he probably believes the earth is flat at this point because um, he's flat. Let's say Houston is tough at home, man. And I don't know that my outcome changes in Indy, but let's go 31. 22 Houston. Yeah, I'm I'm going to go 37-17 Houston. Uh I think if we're in Indianapolis it gets a little closer. Um you know, I think that uh Richardson uh, cuz he's is he back in or is he coming back this he's week? Back. He's back. Okay. So I think that like Richardson definitely makes the Colts a little more competitive. I still think Houston's definitively the best team in that division they're definitely one of the better teams in the afc uh they're at home they had a big lot they had a, a tough loss to green bay last week uh stroud got beat up a little bit so he's gonna be hungry i just yeah i i see that houston's feasting in this game um and because it's a division game i see uh i see indianapolis getting some pride points some garbage time points that's why i'm giving them 17 but yeah 37 17 uh houston rolls so, um, ooh, up next, another tough one. Uh, the fucking dog shit, horrible uh, Jacksonville Jaguars host my ironclad Packers down in Duval. Um, here's the thing: you don't have you you don't have the home field advantage. You got your hurricane ravaged field. You don't have your London fans supporting you anymore. The city of Jacksonville doesn't give a shit about this team anymore. And the Packers are rolling. They win a huge game last week against Houston. They blow out. I don't even remember who we played the week before. Um, uh, The Packers are going to, are going to eat this game. Our our defense is going to be rolling. Uh, Big Dick Lawrence is going to have his big dick in the big dirt. 
Um, I see Packers winning this one 41 14 on the road. Forty one fourteen. Go pack go. Bo. All right. You Homer. I if it was a game, if it was a game the other team had a shot, I would I would pick the other team, but um yeah, I don't know. Look, I don't think Jacksonville's gonna win this game, but I also think they're I have a little bit more respect for them than you do. I'm gonna go 31 27 um for Green Bay. That's just how I feel about it, man. It's the way it went down. Okay. Um is this game competitive? I fuck man, like I just You're playing. Uh, all right, New England, uh, Miami, two is playing, and this is a good game for him to come back because Arizona does not have a, a super dynamic defense, so he's probably not going to take a lot of hits. That being said, two is kind of stupid, and he leads with his head, so I could see him getting injured, um, or you know, potentially dying on the field. Hopefully not, um. This one's your pick. Uh, Miami is hosting Arizona. I think that Kyler Murray would be a great quarterback for the Dolphins. <laughs> I think he makes a lot of sense there, dude. Because You're not wrong. You're not wrong. When he's with his ability to scramble outside of the pocket and those two Jets. On the on the receiving core, just blasting down the field, a lot of broken plays would be turning into the 50, 60 yard touchdowns, and and as a testament to that, that's what Tua was doing. Kyler Murray's just a better version of that, um, but we don't live in fantasy land. Um, I do think it, it is an eleven a ten a.m. game for Arizona, which we got to consider. Um, <clears throat> however, Tua coming back, he's going to be rusty. Um, but I think he's going to, he's going to be enthusiastic with the other players on the team. I'm, you know what? I'm going to, I know that you're going to pick Arizona. So I'm going to pick Miami here. I'm going to pick Miami 28 to 24. Yeah. Um, See, and I was I was actually kind of thinking about picking Miami in this game. I was I'm gonna pick whoever you don't. Um because the the first the first five games we picked are, are obvious. Um and I can't really justify picking against you. This game could go either way. Uh, Miami with Tua is a better team than Arizona, but you're right. He's gonna be rusty coming back. Um he's got definitely has a brain injury um a, 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 you know a long term uh traumatic brain injury based off of those fucking press conferences and i don't think we're seeing the same to a, and i think that somebody even as as dynamic and fast as Tyreek Hill you got to get the ball in somewhere around him and i just don't see it happening um i think that um kyler has played some really good games um, and I think that Marvis, Marvin Harrison Jr. definitely has some breakout potential. And then I think that somebody that nobody really talks about on Arizona um, is in James Conner. This dude is a he's a beast. He he can he can really he sets you up. You know he makes a third and six into a third and two because he's that strong. And I think that against a team that's struggling as much as Miami is, I think Arizona can get this win. So I'm going to take. I'm going to take the Cardinals on the road. Um, I'm going to say 24-17. Um, I think it's a closer game. Um, so, but here, let me, let me, let me, you say that Kyler on the Dolphins is an interesting prospect. Let me give you a, let me give you one that's maybe more interesting. Dak Prescott. Ooh. Dak Prescott in a in a in a in a in a Dolphins jersey. Look, I don't I don't been, know if that makes them into a winning team, but it definitely makes them a lot more fun to watch. 
I would have I would have thought that's really great at the beginning of the season when I thought Dak Prescott's done in Dallas. But they just signed him big time, and so it's just hard for me to think of him anywhere else. I mean, but you're it's, not wrong. It's not, not right. going to happen because Jerry is is an asshole, and he would rather lose than admit that he was wrong. Um, <laughs> that, that, let's just be honest. That's it's the way he's done. That's, uh, look at the Mike McCarthy contract right now. It's there's no reason to keep him there. But Jerry Jones doesn't want to say like, ah, shit, I made a mistake. We got to try again. He won't do it. He's a fucking, he's a, he's a Texas douchebag. He's just like, hell no, I'm always right. So, but um, yeah, either way, this game, Arizona, I think gets the dub uh, down um, in the land of uh, the Art Deco buildings um, <laughs> and, and Cuban sandwiches. Um, okay. New England Jets. In Foxborough, Aaron Rodgers sucks. Drake May is maybe good. This is my pick. It's a tougher one um, because I uh, I hate the Jets. I want them to lose, but I don't know if they will lose this game because New England is that is that much of a struggle team. I am going to go against my better instincts, and I'm going to pick the Patriots to win this one. Um. I'm picking the Patriots because they're at home. I think Drake May has potential. And I think that Aaron Rodgers is a walking, talking dumpster fire. And I think that the Jets, it's going to be really hard for me to pick them in any game going forward. So I think that Drake May finds a way to win uh, in a close game. I'm going to say 13 to 10, um, potentially a cold one. Patriots win it. So, and I'll let you tell me why you're picking the Jets. Um, you want my score first? I I want I want whatever you want to give me. Twenty one twenty. It the Compatriots, dude. The You're... Patriots own the Jets in Foxborough, New England too. I love it, man. I love uh, that. I love that you don't have to root for the Jets. Well, first of all, let me just tell you this, my friend. If I pick the Jets. And New England wins this fucking game, I will hate myself. That's a lose lose. I will hate myself. I was leaning towards New England before I learned that you got to pick first on this one, just because of the home records. I mean, I realized if this was um Belichick, I wouldn't even think twice about it. I would be like, this game's already over. The Jets are not winning in New England with Belichick there. They just they never did. They didn't. Yeah, um, they, they are incapable. But I also want to see Drake May follow the trajectory of uh, Bo Nix. And right now the Jets secondary is banged up. They were dropping like flies. That team is injury. Um, and Russell Wilson just roasted them for 37. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, 21-10, New England. All right, twenty-one twenty. Sorry, my bad. Fuck yeah, man. I'm I'm glad we can agree that we don't want the Jets to win. That we would rather maybe make a bad a bad pick than watch the Jets succeed. Um, but I honestly like I think New England does win this at home, uh, just because of how much that organization is suffering. Uh, I mean, they don't have a head coach. They have a quarterback who's bringing in all his old buddies who can't play anymore. Um, fuck yeah. it. Um. <laughs> okay, up up next. Uh ooh. I love that you have to pick this game first. Me too. I love it. I love it because um because these are these this is gonna be a good game. Both of these teams have 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 excelled and failed spectacularly this season. And um I don't know. I don't really know what team is gonna show up on the other side of the ball. So um Atlanta um at Jacksonville or at I'm sorry Atlanta at Tampa and their big goofy pirate ship all right talk to me what do you got <clears throat> I got B. John Robinson I got Kirk Cousins coming off of a uh awakening game a wake-up call game 
if he performs much more like that, Michael Penix Jr. is going to be getting to play. And we actually did get to see the first snaps from Michael Penix Jr. in the Seahawks game, of all ironic things. Um, it was awesome. It was awesome to see number nine out there. Uh, he completed his first pass. I do love him. Um, but Kirk Cousins has to win this game, dude. He has to win this game if they want to win the division. Tampa Bay has got two receivers that are not going to be playing in this game. Um, and they're Hall of Fame caliber players. So let's uh, let's see Baker, May- Baker Mayfield uh, try and find Rashad White. Right. He did twice in this game in the fourth quarter, but um, that was garbage time, dude. All the other players – were out for Baltimore. They were not putting in their starters and putting them at risk for injury. And for some reason, Tampa Bay still was. And guess what happened? They lost their best receiver for the season. Terrible, terrible story. I hate that, but this is why Atlanta's going to win because they got their pieces and they're pissed. I mean, it's bad coaching for sure. Um. Okay, well, let's talk about, or um, okay, so you're you're taking Atlanta. It sounds like. Yep. Give me a score. Thirty-one twenty-four. Okay. All right. So here's why I'm picking Tampa, and um. Oh really? Again. I'm picking Tampa again after after they let me down. Now here's the thing: <laughs> Baltimore. Baltimore is a team that struggled with their identity but they are still significantly much more talented than, than both of these teams. Um, here's I'm picking Tampa, not because of anything that they've done positive, especially in this last week, because they got pretty worked um, in the, in the early game by Baltimore. They got some garbage time. Baker Mayfield showed a little bit of resiliency, which I'm a fan of, but here's the problem with Atlanta. Kurt Cousins is the most inconsistent player I think out of any starting quarterback in the league because you never know what Kirk Cousins you're going to get. Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew's not a starter. Um, he is this week. I mean, he is now, like because of injury, but like he's not. When you look at their depth chart, he's not listed number one. Kirk Cousins is. He's over Michael Penis. He's. He's 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 one of those guys that gave him a big contract and they expected him to come in there and perform. And then they go they go in they go against Seattle last week at home. And Seattle, who is really weak to mid-level throws, something that Kirk Cousins is supposed to be able to make a read on. You know, he's able to he's supposed to be able to make those audibles. He's supposed to be able to adjust. And I don't want to take anything away from Seattle, but he could not move the ball against a defense that was really struggling. Going to be a better defense in Tampa. I think it's going to be a closer game. I think that missing those receivers is going to be impactful. I still think Tampa wins at home. So I'm taking uh, Tampa at home, 23-20. Um, and uh, that's all there is to it. I, um, you know, I could be wrong. I think that, um, if Kirk Cousins has, if he does the Kirk Cousins thing and shows up one week after not showing up the week before, um, I can see Atlanta pulling this off. I just like, I hate, I hate this game. I hate this division. I really do. I, I fucking this this division is so shit to me. No, but I was happy to make that choice first because I'm knowing that you have to make this choice first. Oh, I have to pick this game first. Yeah. Oh man, that sucks. Um. I should I should let you I should let you pick it first because I I think I know who you're gonna well you know what I don't know who you're gonna pick so I'm gonna make it easy for you um I'm gonna let you pick your boys because I'm taking Buffalo on the road um Seattle uh took a hey, uh well, you skipped two games I did I have oh shit you're right oh my god I'm so sorry uh Cincinnati Philly okay so. Spoiler alert, I'm going to take Buffalo in your game. Um, uh, (laughs) Cincinnati and Philly. This game, man, this game is tough. It's tougher than it should be. Um, That's that's why I'm like, you got You like that I have to make this pick? 
Oh, I already know. I already knew I was picking in the Buffalo game, so that don't matter to me. But no, 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 yeah. This, one, um, this one's hard. This one's this one's hard. Yeah. Um, Cincinnati hosting Philly. <sighs> Fuck me. <man. laughs> because okay, Cincinnati's played really poorly this year. Um, Philadelphia's have- played really poorly this year. They have. Philadelphia's played some bad games this year. They've a lot they they played a really bad game against Atlanta, who I who I kind of just dunked on. Um fuck man. Um, but they did get a big win in Brazil against the Packers. Cincinnati has week one. What's that? In week one. It was week one, and it was in Brazil on a fucking soccer field that was covered in, in lube. Um fuck. I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna pick Philly so you can see, so, you know, because it gives you the opportunity to gain a game because I know that you're gonna pick Cincinnati. Um I think um when it comes down to these tough games, you know, these games that you don't want to gamble on, the games that seem like trap games, it's always a comfort to me to pick the team that has the most talent. And Saquon, I think, is the best running back in the league right now with with Christian out. And um, I think Cincinnati's defense has not been a good performer. And so by that, those metrics alone, I'm going to pick the Eagles. Um, I could absolutely be wrong. So if I'm wrong on this game, um, I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, there's no way the Eagles lose this game. No, there's there's a million ways they could lose this game. So I'm taking the Eagles on the road. Um, 31-27. Um Saquon Saquon uh, gets a couple of gets a couple of tutties, continues his his march to uh to be the league leader in uh, rushing this year. All right, this is what I wanted this is what I wanted you to land on, my friend. Saquon Barkley is a difference maker on a team that is kind of crappy right now. And the reason they're crappy is because they have a disconnect between their quarterback and their coaching staff. Their offensive play calling coaching staff mostly. He lost his starting center. Um, he lost when he lost his starting center. He lost the glue that kept that relationship working between him and Solari. Um, so, man, it's tumultuous. They did rack up a win last time out, uh, impressing fashion. But I also think you can't keep a good dog down, and Joe Burrow is just too good, too good of a player to be where they're at. And he knows he's got to take advantage of every home field game that he has left. So I'm gonna, I will rival you on this one. And I'll say 29, 26. Us in Zonati. Yep, the Bengals. The Bengals. The Bengals. Or as my uh, my daughter would say, kitty cat. Um, that's her thing. She loves cats. Every time she sees cats on, cat on TV. she also loves football. Whenever she sees a football game, she says, "Go go football." Does she like? Um, cheese? Does she like cheese? Loves cheese. We're like best favorite thing. She was eating cheese before she had teeth. We're like me too. And I'll I eat mean, long after I lose. Do what you will about the Packers. Cheese is amazing. If you hate cheese, like if you hate the Packers, I understand. If you hate cheese, I, I don't. I don't understand you at all. No, um, you, you're not human. Yeah, like you know, if you're lactose intolerant, take a pill. Cheese right. is worth. Um, I Chargers hate both these teams. Um, but I got to pick. I got to pick, and I'm going to go with the Chargers. Um, because New Orleans is quarterbackless. I was going to say, uh, we don't we don't have to spend any time talking about this. The Chargers will win. Spencer Rattler looks like um uh, he could play Patrick Mahomes. In a movie about Taylor Swift and and uh, Travis Kelsey, um, yeah, uh, fucking yeah, it's New Orleans until they get their quarterback situation figured out, they're not going to beat anybody. And and the Chargers are are good; they're better than the Broncos, and you got your shit kicked by the Broncos. Um, okay, uh, on to the next game. I will. Um, you give me the score. Oh shit! Uh, Chargers. Chargers 31, New Orleans 6. All right. And I said 21 to 18. All right. You, you say Buffalo. Well, give me a score there. 
yeah, Buffalo, uh, Buffalo on the road. Um, man, that is a long flight um, from Buffalo to Seattle. Uh, actually, it's probably not too bad. You go across Canada. Um, yeah, Buffalo's going to win. I see this one being kind of high scoring. I'm going to say 37-27. I think Gino gets some tutties. I think um, uh, Smith and Jigma might ball out in this game. I think that Seattle will score some points. Um, but I just think Josh Allen, he's going to see that the, those weak spots and the, on those low, those check down throws, he's going to beat them up. And as soon as uh, Seattle bites, he's going to go over the top. Certainly a possibility, dude. However... The twelfth man will be in full throat for this game. Um, they were pretty loud in Atlanta, if I'm being honest with you. Um, despite the fact that we were really bad for the three weeks leading up to that game, I was really shocked to hear them at all. Uh, but at the end of the game, you could hear through the whole stadium, which was awesome. Anytime you can get that in an away game. Well, yeah, when you're when you're up, but when you're up by thirty, the other the other fans don't get to cheer. <laughs> That's a good point. Um, man, I'd love to see this trend of takeaways continue. Uh, because we've not been good at that all year. I yeah, I don't know who this team is. I don't like picking against Seattle and then Seattle wins. This would be a signature win. I mean, on this season, and it would tell the rest of the NFL. Okay, okay, these guys are okay. Party on Wayne, you know, mm -hmm. type thing. So I, despite my better judgment, I'm gonna pick Seattle to win. Let's go. And I'm gonna say that they're that we ro just roll over their defense. Um, our defense isn't gonna be much better, so it's gonna have to be one in a shootout. I'm going 41-38. The Hawks. Yep. Outstanding. Confident? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, but honestly, I imagine could if see I was it. anywhere close. I could see I could see Seattle pulling this one off. Um, but it's just it's so hard. They you guys have been so inconsistent. And the Bills have been really, for the most part, you know who they are. Even when they lose, they still play a good game. Like when they lost that game against Houston, like that was it's still a great performance. Well, and I look at it this way. I'm looking at this. If Buffalo loses this game, then I'm looking at Kansas City as the one seed and Baltimore as the two seed. Buffalo will be below that line. I know. How fucking sad is that? That that's the that's the AFC right now. I, I mean, just, it's been that way for a couple of years, but well, a couple of years ago, those teams where it was like, you know. Kansas City was ironclad. Buffalo was ironclad. Cincinnati was ironclad. Baltimore was ironclad. Like the, you had these fucking super teams. Right. This You're year, right. it's all on the other side of the fence. You're right. Um, yeah, you got Houston is maybe the best team in the AFC. Um, okay, so speaking of good teams, which is so fucking strange because two years ago these were the worst teams in the league. Uh Rookie ph phenom quarterbacks, um, Washington hosting the Chicago Bears. Um, what's his? Yeah, um, I always want to call him J uh, J uh, Jaden Reed, but uh, Jalen. Jaden. Who? What's that? Jaden. Yeah, from uh, from Washington, yeah. uh, is hosting, um, Caleb Williams, and this is your pick. Ooh, I'm interested to see what you uh, and well, I, I think the thing you're that sucks, but I want to hear. I want to hear. The thing that sucks about this Gobo is coach is like we hope that he's going to that Jaden Daniels is going to play. But I don't know. I don't know for a fact. And that means I'm relying on Marcus Mariota beating up on a rookie and a good defense. I still think I'm still there. Dude, I'm looking at a team that's scored 40 more than they haven't. And the Bears might have a good defense, but I'm looking at least in the 35-point range for this team with or without Daniels. And their defense just rides along for the ride, man. So I'm going to go 
26 in favor of the Washington uh, Commanders. The Commandalorians. Yeah. I um I don't disagree. I think that the Bears are and it, it pains me to say this and I'm hoping that my brother's not watching this show but like the Bears are definitely much improved from last year. I didn't think that they were going to they were I didn't think that Caleb Williams was going to make them better. He does. He's he's a better quarterback. They have a better receiving core. They have a better offense. That being said, the Bears have been winning against bad teams. Washington has also been winning against bad teams, but they've also been putting up huge numbers on good teams as well. Yeah. So I am also taking the commanders. Yeah. Um, I think that this game is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I'm going to take them 41-37. Um, um, and I think that even with Mariota, um, talent has never been an issue for Marcus Mariota. It's always been attitude. And I yeah. think that like – you know, when you put him on a team like Washington and as dynamic as they've been this season, I don't see the Bears defense being able to keep up. I agree. So. All right. So nobody gains a game there. Um, nobody's going to gain a game on this one either. Denver's hosting Carolina. Um, and as much as it pains me to say it, I got to give it to the hometown boys because Carolina is dog shit. This team is so bad. Like, even with – if Andy Dalton comes out, and Andy's had some success in Denver. He will not have it with this particularly cat-themed team. Um, Bo, Bo Nix is going to have a day. Uh, Javante Williams is going to have a day. Cortland Sutton's going to have a day. Patrick Sertan's going to have a couple of picks. I just fucking the, – the Panthers are so bad. There's no reason to talk about this game. Uh, Denver, 38. Panthers, 3. Um you know, Bryce Young maybe plays at least half the game, throws four interceptions. Bryce four int. All right. Um gosh. It's in the mile high. And you've got a Denver team that is on the cusp of a playoff berth. Say that again. I know it, it, it pains my soul because I get to listen to these assholes on the radio talk about it nonstop. But like, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think, uh, boy, I'm gonna say 21, 17, Denver is gonna be victorious. Yeah, that's just how I feel. I mean, yeah, no, they're they're gonna they're I, I think they're gonna kick the Panthers right in their Rocky Mountain oysters. All right, um, Las Vegas. I hate this game. I fucking hate it. I'm so glad you have to pick first on this one because fuck this stupid game. Uh, Chiefs go to Vegas, gambling with house money at this point. Um, whatever. Uh, take us there. Uh, what do I want? Is it my pick? It is. I have to pick this one? Yeah, I picked the Broncos. Oh, man. So did you, but yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you got to pick this one first. Well. I got, I got, I got the hard one next, next time. Yeah, this is easy, man. This is uh, a no-brainer. You got injuries galore for the Raiders, and you got a less than top 10 quarterback in the Chiefs. But just so happens to find a way to get it done, although he does have a new weapon. How many times do we get to see this new weapon coming? This is so tiring. I'm tired of the Chiefs, man. Tired of the Chiefs. They're putting me to sleep in this broadcast, even thinking about it. No, literally. Like, I, literally. I'm so bored. I'm so bored talking about this. I don't know what to say about this game. Andy Reid is a god. That's all we that's all I know. When you have players that should be performing at top levels and you're still undefeated despite them having career worst and, and I'm talking Kelsey too, all these guys. How 
and I don't want to blame it on the refs because, I mean, the refs make one crucial call at the end of the game, and it ends up costing the other team. But the Chiefs are hanging with these teams to make that even possible, right? So I don't think this one's close. If it is, Kansas City's not going to gonna win the Super Bowl. I'm sorry. This is a game where you absolutely must take care of business and show the league that you're not that you are still here to play. Uh, if they don't win this by three scores, there's something seriously wrong in Kansas City. So I'm going to th- say 37-16. Kansas City should have no problem hitting that mark. You know. You're not wrong. Um, there's, there's literally um, the Raiders. The Raiders are worse in every aspect of the game. Um, it's a division game. You want to think it's a trap game. You want to think, you know, Kansas City has been has been inconsistent in their wins and sort of questionable at times, um, morally, league involvement wise. But I got two two predictions for this game. Number one, the Chiefs are going to win. And number two, Andy Reid is going to get a free meal at the Heart Attack Cafe before he leaves town. I don't need to put that in the notes. We already know that's true. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Chiefs, yeah. Chiefs. Thir- um, what did you say? 37-17? 37-16. 37-16. So I should say 38-18 or, or uh, 38-17. I won't do that to you again. Um, 31-13, Chiefs. And my guess... One dollar. <laughs> One dollar. Okay. Here we go. Here's my tough game that I have to pick. Uh San Francisco hosts Dallas. Two this teams. That's a tough one. You know, it's one of those ones where like you shouldn't it's like I always tell myself if you're if you're if you're if if you think it's a trap game, like look at the numbers. Look! Look at um! Look at what you th- look! Look at who's on the field and who's not on the field, and it's like in this game, Dallas is coming off of a bye. Dallas has won games. They've lost games in spectacular fashion. They have a quarterback with a huge contract who doesn't really want to play there anymore. Um. You have Mike you McCarthy, that? who's a shitty coach. Do you believe that he wants to go somewhere else? I don't. I don't think I, – I don't. I, I think that he's happy with the money. I don't think that he is happy losing all the time or playing for Mike McCarthy's stupid ass. But you look across You look across the aisle at the 49ers, the 49ers have nobody left. You know, it's like, who's going to block Mika Parsons? Who's going to, like, run around the edge? Who's going to – you know, throw it in like who, who, like you're throwing into the Dallas secondary. Who are you fucking throwing it to? You know, and so for that, when it comes down to it, I'd like to think San Francisco wins this game because I want Dallas to suffer. I don't think they will. I think Dallas gets this win. Um, I think that San Francisco, when they're healthy, wins this game 500 times out of 501 times. Um, but this is that one time where where the Cowboys are gonna are gonna are gonna are, are gonna or Cowboys country let's ride, uh, where that actually makes a lot more sense. Um, I'm taking Dallas on the road um, in an ugly game, seventeen fourteen, uh, and nobody's happy afterwards. Okay, um, I want you to make a bold prediction here. Okay, give me Brock Purdy's stat line for the game. Okay, Brock Purdy. Attempts 12, 12, 12 for 23. Okay. Um, one touchdown, two picks. How many yards? 278. 278 yards, one tutty, two picks. Two picks. QBR like 63. I can't wait to see. That's very specific. You, you asked me to be bold, man. I'm, I'm nothing if not bold. I'm. I got a fucking. Ninja, I got a four oh, foot ninja turtle behind me. Thank you. Um. All right. I'm gonna say the score of this game is twenty one to seventeen, and San Francisco is gonna win. 
I, I hope you're right. I hope I'm wrong. You oh well yeah because you're you're uh, you're 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 in a division with San Francisco so so objectively I think America wins if the Cowboys lose. Yes. Um. All right, and then I think we can wrap it up. Um, this is your pick, but I I don't I don't think we're going to struggle with this Pittsburgh hosting uh, the Giants. Well. The Russell Wilson era has begun. We wondered if it would ever arrive to begin with. And now that we're seeing the way that it's been masterfully put together, uh, we can only just sit back and watch and, and hope. Um, I'm cheering for him. I really am, dude. Um, especially would love to get a revenge on this stupid-ass Giants team. That had no business coming into Seattle winning. God damn it. That stuff drives me nuts, dude. That's pretty bad. But you know what? Every team has a bad loss. Every Super Bowl team has taken a bad loss yeah. during the season. Yeah, I agree. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with 37. Because I like that number for Russ. Uh the New York Giants have not scored 37. And that would be the second team in a row they would put up 37 that has not scored 37 in a game. And I th- I believe in the last two games combined, New York has a grand total of 10 points. I was going to say they've not been playing Seven very well. Three, I, and, and I think, I mean, look at the defense of the Steelers. This is the game where – it's at home again. They they're healthy. They could conceivably take the ball away from whatever chump quarterback is playing three three or more times. I'm yeah. I'm gonna say thirty seven. What was the score of the other? 14? 37-14. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. Don't. Don't don't hurt your heads about this one, folks. Like, yeah, Pittsburgh is has got it. Um, so I'm gonna um and and because of the Giants, I can't think of the Giants and not think about uh, my favorite sports comedy growing up, The Little Giants. Yeah. Um, maybe one of Rick Moranis's last movies. Um, yeah, and they had a speech at halftime that it's like the Cowboys would beat the Giants 99 times out of 100, but it leaves that one time. That one time was your win over Seattle. So you're going to lose the rest of the games this season. Um, Because, yeah, you just – they're better. The the, the Steelers are a better team. They're at home. They have a better coach. They have a better quarterback. They have a better running back. They have better receivers. Like, maybe not – maybe Malik Neighbors is better than the Steelers receivers. Who fucking cares? Steelers are going to win. You said 37-14. Yeah, I'm going to go 29-29. 29 to 6. And the Giants continue their inability to score fucking points because they suck and they have Daniel Jones. And Can I play devil's advocate with you for just a moment? Let's do it. What if the Giants win this game? What does that mean it, for Russell Wilson? Ooh, <laughs> that makes it more interesting. Certainly it depends. Does. It depends. If if the Giants win because Russell Wilson throws four interceptions, that's a that's one story. But if they win because the Giants go and play a complete game because they're still an NFL football team, that's a different story. So I think that, like, if the Giants win this game, um, as highly unlikely as that is, I think that people are going to question Russ, especially, you know, because he got booed uh, when he went out there the first time and everyone, you know, Justin Fields has been playing pretty consistently. Um, I think even if, it's a loss and the it's at the fault of Russell Wilson. I still think Tomlin rides with him until he, if he loses like more than once because of that, then that's another story. But dude, if this game is 42, 41 and the giants win, Russ is fine. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because I mean, that's clearly a defensive problem yeah. unless the if... ones were pick sixes or whatever. Well, what I'm if... saying I'm saying even if they shit the bed and they have a game like Seattle and they just get blown out by the Giants for no particular reason, even if that happens, I think Russ is okay for at least one more week. I don't know because 
here's the thing. You got the bye week. So I think that would it would go back to competition at that point. It'd be like whoever works the hardest and shows me that they can come and now beat our division rivals, which we have a string of after this bye week, that's who's going to play. Um, Cause I don't think getting blown out would be a good look for us. What it would not. What if he does hurt his his calf in the first half or something? And well, feel- if he gets hurt, it makes the decision uh, uh, and like phenomenally easier. But for sure. But I mean, it's honestly kind of a good problem to have. Is that when you know that if your quarterback is struggling, you got another guy who can step in and might be as good or better. But that see that's. That's the Tomlin. That's the brilliance of Tomlin, in my opinion, dude. He was ready. and the head office. You got you got to you got to give it to the Steelers head office too. They are good at at, at pre agents. He was and ready. Draft. I mean, they were ready for this. So, um, I just I'm cheering for the for them from afar because it's AFC and everything. Don't give a shit. I was gonna say I'm kind of like I don't I don't care what happens in the AFC. Like it's. I mean, it's 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 irrelevant to me. Like, I hope it's somebody that's not the Chiefs because I like diversity in football. But I also kind of like the, the idea that the Chiefs could be the first team to win three Super Bowls in a row. You know what I'd love to see, Gobo? Hmm. I'd love to see Russell Wilson and the Pittsburgh Steelers in an AFC Championship game in Kansas City against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. That would be awesome. <laughs> or. Here's an even here's an even better one. Pittsburgh and Denver in the playoffs. I don't think I don't think because I don't think that they'll be high ranked enough to play each other in the AFC championship, but they could cross. I think right now both of them are playoff teams. Well, and you know, the fudged up thing about this is they already played. And Russell did not get to play in that game. He had to stand there watching because it was week one, I think, wasn't it? It was. Um, no, no. Um, one or two. The Broncos played the Seahawks in week one. Oh, yeah. It was week two. Yeah. Week two. And uh, he had to stand there and watch. And the Broncos got throttled that game. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, man. All right. So that's it. That's football. Um, I can take the Bills stuff off now. Um, so uh yeah. Crazy predictions. Um, not as good of a slate as it was last week, but we still got some interesting games. Could be some upsets. I mean, that's always that's always the hope is that there are chances for upsets when there's these and these mismatch games like that. Hopefully it's not a Jacksonville upset. Um that's our show for the week. Uh, make sure to check out our prediction show as well. That should be posted right before this. Um, or no, this was the prediction show. Make sure to check out our recap show. Check out our recap show, which should be posted right before this. Check out all of the other cool content on Lock 22 Productions. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. There's buttons right below the video. Easy enough. You just click them with your mouse, or if you're on your phone, you just touch them with your little finger. And uh, you can see our beautiful faces every single week, sometimes more than once. Um, check us out on TikTok. We make wild predictions on TikTok. And then Dames painstakingly goes through these long videos and takes out every funny thing that we say and puts them into little, short, bite-sized clips for you to enjoy on TikTok. And you can laugh with your friends. And then, as it was with the case of my prediction against the Vikings, you can dunk on the hosts. For being skewed by our personal beliefs. He covered it all, guys. I was gonna say that's I was gonna say what else what else do you got? Mic drop. Mic drop. I don't I have a whole box of microphones in the other room. I don't have any in here. Um you want to drop them though. Yeah, I mean it's carpet, so it's fine. But um yeah, you know, yeah, don't 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 drop your audio equipment. I don't advocate for that. Um all right. All right. as, my, you, as, as my Maisie would say, go, go football. Love you, my friend. Love you.